and we can cut it however you want. Just let it run. Commander 2016's Breed Lethality set stars Atraxa, Praetor's voice, who appears to be the angelic version of Mama Elish Norn. She is the non-red commander, identifies as an angel horror with flying vigilance, death touch, and lifelink, and at the beginning of your end step, proliferate. She is a 4-4. This deck is a favorite for a lot of people, actually. Many people seemed to like the idea of Atraxa as a commander, but this part's going to edit it out while Dan puts music to it. Can I? Okay. Atraxa comes with three other commanders, two of which are of the Golgari clan, and one which is Azurius. We have Rayan, whew, last of the Abzan, who enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it. Whenever a creature you control dies or is put into the command zone, if it had one or more plus one plus one counters on it, you may put that many onto target creature. The synergizes really well with Atraxa's proliferate trigger as even when she returns to the command zone, or when this commander returns to the command zone, you'll be able to put that many plus one plus one counters on target creature. But it is a zero zero, so that means as soon as those counters are gone, it's dead. We have Ishai, Ojitai Dragon Speaker, who is a bird monk, meaning an excellent addition to Kangi Airy Keeper's decks. Then for two and a white, it is a 1-1 one, one with flying, and whenever any opponent casts a spell, you can put a plus one plus one counter on Ojitai Dragon Speaker. This is interesting as a card because the whenever an opponent casts a spell trigger comes off as very blue-white, a little bit reminiscent of cards like Narset Transcendent, but the plus one plus one counters is very heavily blue, and it feels a little out of flavor, but it does have partner, and it is hopping around in a deck with this angel bird Phyrexian woman, so what's the worst that could happen? And last we have... Ikara Shiriki, the Usurper. For three and a black, you get a Naga Wizard. She has Menace, meaning she can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. And whenever a creature that you control deals combat damage to a player, you gain life equal to, this blah, 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 to that creature's toughness. And according to her, the Scaled Ones rule Tarkir now. And that's probably because Nagas and Snakes and Magic often have fairly high toughness. I think Lotus Cobra is a good exception, but like, the Nagas in recent blocks, you know? So she is a 3-7. She's got a big body, Adi Adi, to protect herself. I'd like to talk briefly about the Mana Rocks as they've been reprinted in the Commander 2016 set. I think Wizards really knocked it out of the park by adding the Signets to each of these decks. Seeing as they were released in the past at common rarity out of constructed block sets, but we've never had them this accessible to our colors. We've never had them plugged in here to a multicolored deck like this. I really like the reprint of Dark Stealing. I know one of the decks has the reprint of Chromatic Lantern. Commander Sphere is great. Felwar Stone is an excellent reprint given the theme of Commander 2016 revolving around the four color commanders and the idea that if you are playing against other four color decks or three color decks, which is often more common, but the fact that you will have access to that makes Felwar Stone far better now than it ever has been in the past. For the lands in particular that caught my attention out of this set, we never saw the one colorless into two colored mana filters in recent years. They've never been released in a modern border, so I think that the addition to them to this commander set in particular was great. 
uh, because the cycle was never completely finished. It's a little awkward. We also got Murmuring Bosk this time around. We don't really have any tree folk to reveal, so it's going to enter the battlefield tab, but it doesn't matter because it's forest, so you can fetch for it with your panoramas. You can fetch for it with your Crows and Verge, which was reprinted. Here are my personal favorites of EDH cards that were printed in Commander 2016 in the Breed Lethality set that absolutely were just spot on choices to go into this set. Gave, Guru of Spores, was excellent. He was a commander for his own deck back in the day, which has a really synergistic combo mid-range vibe to it. But adding it to Atraxa, where she has Proliferate, is an excellent, excellent choice. We move over to Necroplasm, who gets a plus one, plus one counter at the beginning of your upkeep. And at the beginning of your end step, you destroy each creature with the converted mana cost equal to the number of plus one, plus one counters on Necroplasm. And Necroplasm has Dredge, too. This was actually only printed in the original Ravnica set. It's quite a difficult card to find, even though it's only worth about a dollar. But I'm going to say printing this card is going to give Necroplasm some much-needed love in the places that he hasn't seen it before. Great in decks like Gave, Atraxa, uh, Gerard is a great one. Any slightly grindier with dredge sub-theme EDH deck. Merciless Eviction, last printed in, I believe, Gate Crash was its only printing. But Merciless Eviction, excellent board wipe. It exiles instead of destroys, meaning that regenerate effects do not apply. It removes creatures from the game, meaning that you're not going to have to deal with them when they bring them back the second time around. Since it was only ever printed once, this in particular is a great wrath to add to Commander 2016. Champion of Lamholt, awesome. Hasn't been seen a lot, but is an EDH staple. Wonderful card. Kicks a lot of ass, takes a lot of names. Look at that axe. Mm. That axe. Juniper Order Ranger, we just saw in Conspiracy 2, but is not ever a bad card to reprint. Colonian Hydra comes back at Mythic Rarity with its big trampoly ass, and it's ready to get more counters than ever as he synergizes so beautifully well with everything else in this deck. Master Biomancer was a rather peculiar addition. It synergizes well, but each other creature you control enters the battlefield with a number of additional plus one plus one counters on it equal to Master Biomancer's power and is a mutant in addition to its other types. So, we have our Necroplasm that's going to enter as an Ooze Mutant with two plus one plus one counters on it. So on its first turn out, it's going to destroy itself another three drops. Another card I am so thrilled to see is Bread for the Hunt. Whenever a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. It's another little Edric, but it's just for you, and it's just for plus one counters. But if you don't have plus one counters on your dudes in this deck, you are doing it so wrong. Scavenging News has been printed in Commander sets before, but I'm happy to see it again. Great opportunity because of the plus one plus one counters, where in the past it was focused more on the graveyard aspect. And a wonderful constructed reprint is Revel Arc. Revel Arc has an evoke cost of five and a white, but you cast it for four and a white. When it leaves the battlefield, you can return up to two card target creature cards with power two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So let's think. Revel Arc Necroplasm. Revel Arc Champion of Lamhole. Revel Arc, oh, Colonian Hydra, because it's just a zero zero, right? Revel Arc Gave, Revel Arc Juniper, it's ridiculous. Revel Arc, excellent card, great opportunity. Deck's great. Uh, retail value of like $34.99, but if we pulled this deck apart and sold it, according to MTG Goldfish, the paper value of this deck would be around $99 USD. That's pretty great of all the decks that they released this time around for the commander sets. Wizards really knocked it right out of the park with Breed Lethality. The cards are gorgeous. It's synergistic. It's evil. It kills stuff does everything you want it to do, and more.